Hi there, welcome back to the English class and to unit 4, all about film and theatre. I mean, how many of us have a gala time in a theatre with friends, family, movies are so amazing, right? So, shouldn't we know who's behind these beautiful movies, who brings the celluloid in front of us? Yes? So today, I will introduce you to an amazing director who is no more, but he's always, he will always remain in everyone's mind. Rendezvous with Satyajitri. Rendezvous means meeting a person. So who is he? The famous, world famous Satyajitri, fondly called as Manikda in India. So why are we learning about him? Let's see. The village India, he's the one who brought out the actual essence of Indian history and Indian roots in front of the whole world. The village India seen through the eyes of Manikta had come alive for audiences across the world. The power of his films came from the honest characters and the atmosphere he built. His direction was very different from the usual direction that was going on in those days in India. You will come to know how. He would often scout for houses, that means go looking for houses and places that looked exactly how he had imagined them in his story. Every director has a story in his mind, doesn't he? He would go hunting through the streets of Bengal, look for that particular house, that particular tree, where he wants to shoot his scene. He would make it a point to include typical Bengali cultures in his movies. He was born and brought up there and he loves the Bengali soil. His films get this feeling of reality from the fact how are they so real? That's because he walked through Bengal and soaked up, absorbed what all he seen with his eyes. He would then translate it onto the screen through his movie. He would go scouting for objects that needed to be placed in the scene, being shot. Every tiny thing that would be in the scene, he would personally pick up from God knows where. He would just go hunting. When he sees an object and he sees the soul of the movie in it, he would bring it down for shooting. He would visit houses and pick up objects once he saw the soul of the movie in them. An extremely patient man. He is famous for using children in his movies and not actors or actresses children from the street or for some village. Imagine how he would make them act, how much patience he has. He would ask the actors to understand the scene and interpret it in their own style. Very rarely will you find a director who doesn't come and tell you, this is how you have to act the scene. But he would never do that. He would give his actors freedom. And because he was so patient, he would let them allow it to come out. He made the actors feel in charge of this wonderful creation called a movie. When you own up to what you do, how wonderfully you are going to perform, that's what he used to let his actors do. Manikta had brought about a different, deep and significant style of filmmaking. Different. He introduced a different mode of expression using different angles of the camera and light, lighting. What is that? He would use professional and non-professional actors. Usually, non-professional actors will behave naturally, but they would not be screen friendly. But he would capture the naturalness in the human being and project it on screen. All that mattered to him was, does the person confirm to the character that he had in mind? Is the person living up to that character? He would often meet some of them on a bus or on a street and he would get smitten by them and offer them the role. His way of filmmaking was completely in contrast to the flamboyant tradition in India. In those days, it was all about studio shooting, lights, zooming in, catching the beauty of the face, makeup, extraordinary dressing, extravagance. But his 
was totally different. It was like a revolutionary. He did not always shoot in the studio. He only sought naturalness and authenticity, truthfulness. He always found scope for improvisation when shooting in natural locales. He used to say, sometimes when you go out and shoot in the open, suddenly nature plays its own game and suddenly there's a different shade of light, a different quantity of light and that matters so much for that scene and not the studios. Be it the angles or some special effect of natural light, he found it more exciting as many times an additional scene arose out of nowhere. So sometimes he would just catch the, uh, the, the, the actor performing very vaguely, a long shot through the fields, through the tall grass, a little child running. He would just, just capture that moment without any flamboyancy. So now, that was what, why we are studying about Satyajit Ray. And today, he's the man telling us about Manikta. And who is he? He is Gaston Roberts, a very, very, very close companion of Satyajit Ray. Now, who else can do justice talking about you, anyone else but your friend? Yes, it's the same here. He's an author, critic, teacher and pioneering figure in film studies. Pioneering means someone who has started something new that wasn't there before. He established Chitrabani in 1970, which is the oldest media training institute in Eastern India, with Satyajit Ray as the advisor right from inception. In those days, there was no institute that taught you how to make an authentic film. He is a pioneer. It was here that serious study of cinema was introduced in Kolkata, 23 years before any film institute or university was ever established in India. Chitrabani was the only center for reference and study for not only filmmakers, but also serious students who want to learn about cinema, who want to find a career in that field, and also enthusiasts, people who are interested to know about cinema. It is as if, he says about Satyajit Ray, it is as if all Bengal was in Manikta. The rich, the poor, the powerful, the humble, the peasants, the city people, peasants are farmers. Children, teenagers, adults, everyone, men, women, that's what he says. It's like all those characters, all the stories were born out of Manikda. He didn't create them from real life. So what about their friendship? It was a unique friendship. You will be surprised how don't we sometimes find a friend out of nowhere and even you never expected to find a friend there? That's what happened to them. A unique friendship developed between this French Canadian priest, who is Gaston Roberts, and one of the greatest film directors, Satyajit Ray, and it had a singular impact. That means a very special impact on Bengali films, both academically and practically. Practically in the sense, how movies were made, that was affected by their friendship. A new style of filmmaking came, and academically how? Both of them put up Chitrabani. Remember? Study Center for Cinema. That's how. So it was en route to India in 1961. That means Gaston Roberts was coming to India in order to preach the greatness of Christianity. So at a stopover in New York, 26-year-old father Gaston Roberts, he was a priest, was acquainted with the works of Satyajit Ray through the Appu trilogy. Now, Appu trilogy is a set of three movies made by Satyajit Ray about a boy from a Bengali village and his journey from the village to the outside, breaking the confines of the village, finding meaning beyond and what happens to his life. So what happens was, in the Khan's Film Festival, Appu Trilogy was nominated for one of the best uh, regional movies from all over the world. Satyajit Ray himself couldn't go there because he did not have much money. 
And what happened, at the time of the screening of this movie, the critics were already tired the whole day watching so many movies. The judges, they said, uh, no, let's just postpone the screening of Apu Trilogy. But some critics saw the movie, went to the judges and said, please sit with us, you have to watch this. And it won a prize for such a jitre. These are the very movies that Father Gaston Roberts too witnessed and fell in love with Manikta. And he thought, oh my God, is this the reason I'm going to India to meet him? So he found the world of Appu so fascinating that he saw all three films in one sitting. And there began his long-standing love affair with the people of India, Bengali cinema, their culture. And this led to a path-breaking, that means innovative, new methods in cinema making. So there they are, the two friends. In his latest book, Satyajit Ray Essays 1970 to 2005, a compilation of his essays, as the name suggests, was published by Manohar Publishers, New Delhi. Robert provides a scholarly, original analysis of Ray's works. He gave an insight on the greatness of Ray, both as an artist and as a person. He was a gem of a person. No wonder he was called Manikda. The Apu Trilogy was in fact my first portal to West Bengal and its people. Portal means doorway, a window, a way to walk in and experience. In his youth, whose youth? All he knew, um, Father Robert, uh, all he knew of Bengal was through Mircea Eliad's La Nuit Bengali, that means One Bengali Night. It was a novel, some of Tagore's poems and a Reader's Digest article on Mother Teresa. So his exposure to Bengal was very brief and very insignificant. Yet the harsh image of poverty that he saw in the above mentioned roots was emphasized, was made completely true. If the harsh image of poverty brought out by the article on the saint of the slums haunted him, Whose article is this? Saint of the Slums was Mother Teresa's article and how she went about in Bengal helping the poor. That harsh poverty itself touched him so much. But when he saw Appu's trilogy, Appu's world came as a reassurance that people there need help. There is so much misery there. No, Appu, Sarvajaya, even Harihar, that means the characters from Appu trilogy, did not need my help. But how not to love them? He fell in love with those characters. I thought it was fortunate that I would soon be among them. He was very excited to come to India. There they are discussing many, many things. Roberts does not endorse the accusation. That means he doesn't support the claims of Ray's detractors. That means people who criticize Ray's. What did they criticize him? They criticized that the master director made his reputation selling India's poverty to the West. Many of them criticized Satyajit Ray saying, you have portrayed poor image of India in the West and you've garnered attention. You've got everyone's attention. Why did you show India in such poor light? But no, his friend disagrees. What he says? What struck me most was not the material poverty showed in the films. The people being actually poor is not what we have to see there. The enormous spiritual poverty of some rich people is more deplorable than the material poverty. He's saying, look at those people who are rich and yet feel nothing for the poor. That is what Manikda was showing. Roberts does not speak with the arrogance of the West. He says, I was here on a quest to know the world and in the process know myself. I did not come here to convert people into Christianity, no. In fact, I'm the one who got converted. What a wonderful sentence that is. 
but it took him nine years after reaching Calcutta and joining St. Xavier's College to muster up the confidence to meet Ray in person. When you're set out to meet an extraordinary person, you must be well prepared. You must have enough knowledge to strike a conversation with them, right? That's what he did for nine years. Although I wanted to meet him right away, I didn't want to just go and see him like he was a living museum piece. Oh, Satya Jitre, I'm your fan. No, not only that, he wanted to know him and to become his friend. I wanted to prepare myself, get to know his works, so that when we met, there could be a worthwhile dialogue. When they finally met, it was the beginning of a close friendship that lasted 22 years until Manikda's death in 1992. It was a very quiet friendship that developed over the years. Manikda, who was affectionately called so by his friends, was a shy person and always very discreet about displaying his emotions. Though to outsiders, raise massive structures, six feet, two inches, physical and super intelligent, might have made him come across as cold, aloof, not mingling with anyone, and even intimidating, even frightening. But he was in reality a very simple, unassuming man with a subtle sense of humor. He would never assume anything about anyone or anything, in matter of fact. It was an unspoken arrangement between the two of them to meet on Sundays at 9 a.m. at Ray's residence on Bishop Lefroy Road, Kolkata. Ray would invite Robert Jover for private screenings of his latest films and welcomed comments on them. But this happened only after the friendship had cemented, became strong. For in the early days of their dialogue, Ray's shyness prevented him from talking about his own films. How humble! We see people boasting about their work, but Manikda never did that. These are a few snippets about Manikda while he was shooting with all his co-workers, his amazing work. He was even shy of receiving compliments, said Robert. To Robert, the greatest mark of Ray's appreciation for him was that he often addressed the French-speaking priest in Bengali. In spite of my lack of elegance in that language and the fact that Ray knew both English and Bengali so well. So he loved his friend so much he forgot that he's a French guy. He used to talk to him in Bengali and this guy used to somehow figure out what he's saying. Ray's screenplay manuscripts were an art by themselves. They used to say that Satyajit Ray used to draw illustrations of the scenes, not just notes on how to carry out the shooting. He used to draw pictures, handwritten in Bengali with notes in English for his set designer, with sketches here and there, and occasional staff notation of fragments of music. He used to even compose music for his movies. There was one particular scene in Apu Trilogy where a mother has to break down crying over her daughter's death when her husband returns home. At that scene, Satyajit Ray did not use human voice. He, yes, he just used a musical instrument in the background to bring out the sorrow of a, of a, of a set of parents mourning over their daughter's death. He was that much into music. One Sunday morning, Robert found Ray in a disturbed mood. A few well-known personalities of the city had visited him earlier to go through some of his manuscripts. After they left, Ray found the Charulata screenplay missing. Ray was almost sure who the culprit was. I asked him whether he was planning to take any action and he said no. And he explained that he did not want to hurt the reputation of the person. I mean, who can forgive anyone who's, who has done such a huge mistake? I was absolutely stunned by his humane concern. Forgiving a person who has faulted you is so difficult. And like Rabindranath Tagore, Ray strode his time like a colossus, like a giant. Robert writes, it is as if all Bengal was in Manikda. 
this one thing when Satyajitre was a kid, he met Ravindranath Tagore, and Ravindranath Tagore himself wrote a poem for Satyajitre, which said. When you open the doors and you come out, you see the mountain, you see the ocean, but do you see the tiny drop of dew on the leaf beside your house? What it meant was, the obvious is obvious to everyone, but the smallest things in life should be clear to you. That was where Manikta found his inspiration. Philosophically too, Robert Fields, Ray took off where Ravindranath Tagore signed out. That means Ravindranath Tagore's legacy continued in Manikta. If one compares the last major prose piece by Tagore, Sabhyatar Sankat, Crisis of the Civilization, which he wrote at the beginning of the Second World War, which contains immortal dictum that in spite of what was happening, it would be a sin to lose faith in man and the last three films of Ray. So he's saying compare the last book of Ravindranath Tagore and the last movies of Satyajit Ray, they're speaking about the same aspect. Keep your faith in man. He will bounce back to be a good person. His last three films were Ganashastru, Shakha Prashakha and Agantuk. The analogy becomes clear. So that was Satyajit Ray, Manik Das, best friend, Robert, telling us so much, about, so much about him. I hope you will go ahead and watch Apu Trilogy and appreciate his work. So I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.